Hey guys, how are you? I am Professor Iqbal Hussain. Uh, uh, today, I will talk about uh, Hamlet as a tragic hero. Uh, it's a text uh, prescribed for master's final year students under National University. Well, uh, Hamlet is a, you know, uh, a uh, monumental work, a work of art. Critics have uh, worked page after page to analyze the character of uh, Hamlet, but they have their different views and opinions about the character of Hamlet. Uh, like Mona Lisa's smiling, uh, Hamlet's character remains a mystery. The smile of Mona Lisa remains mystery for the artist. Similarly, the character of Hamlet remains a mystery for the critics. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to <coughs> uh, uh, compare uh, Hamlet's, Hamlet, uh, Shakespeare's uh, uh, concept of tragedy with uh, Aristotle's concept of tragedy. Aristotle's uh, concept of a tragic hero is that a hero is a man of high social standing. He has a very noble social family background. He is a good man but not perfect. He has a tragic flaw. Uh, in Shakespeare tragedy, we also find all these things. Uh, Hamlet has a high social and family background. He is a prince. And he is, he is a scholar. And uh, you know, uh, he is he, he's intellectually he, he is of very high caliber. Intellectually he has high caliber, and uh, he has uh, psychological severity. He has deep power of analysis. He has deep power of observation. Things around him. Uh, secondly, uh, Hamlet is a good man, but he is not perfect. He has some lackings in his character. Uh, and thirdly, uh, which is very important, in, in um, astral concept of tragedy, the uh, fate of the hero is predestined, but in Shakespeare's tragedy, the fate of the hero is not predestined. Character himself is largely responsible uh, for his downfall. So anyway, in all these respects, we find some similarities and dissimilarities between Aristotle's concept of a tragic hero and Shakespeare's concept of a tragic hero. Well, uh, uh, Shakespeare's uh, uh, hero is a one-man show. That's very important. Shakespeare's hero is a one-man show. One-man show means the hero uh, is the most dominating person. So all other characters revolve or rotate around him. She is the most influential person. She is the most dominating character. So in the play Hamlet, Hamlet dominates all other characters. Uh, uh, one thing, another thing is uh, Hamlet's character. That is, uh, uh, according to according to Aristotle, everything is predestined. But in Shakespeare tragedy, everything is not predestined. The hero is largely responsible for his own action. So uh, uh, nothing is uh, attributed uh, divinely. Nothing is uh, predestined. So to a large extent, Hamlet is responsible for his own action. Uh, another important uh, aspect in a Shakespearean tragedy is, especially in uh, Hamlet, inner conflict. That's very important we find that uh, Hamlet uh, has an introspection, has a capacity, quality of introspection, quality of meditation, retrospection, he thinks and thinks more and more, and uh, he uh, retreats from action. He, he cannot take action. He delays and delays. As a matter of fact, uh, Hamlet has a romantic bent of mind things and things more and more and retreats from his action. So that's a very important thing. 
he is we find self analysis in Hamlet's character self analysis is there uh, we find psychological uh, penetration we can psychosis anal analysis is there so he thinks Hamlet thinks more and more and ultimately fails to take action that's an important problem as far as Hamlet is concerned so uh, when he came to know from the ghost of his father that he must take revenge on Claudius but he failed to take uh, action so another problem that we find uh, with Hamlet is that he has moral idealization ideal, idealism moral idealism that is uh, he, he thinks that he, he, if, when he got a chance to kill Claudius when he was saying prayer he got a chance to kill him but he spared the opportunity spared the opportunity uh, in the context on the ground that his soul will go to heaven so so there is a kind of inner conflict there is a kind of inner conflict in him so he he constantly you know pro procrastinates he delays and delays ultimately he fails to take action so in this kind of i would like to uh, tell you that uh, if we, if we compare hamlet with othello we find that othello othello is a man of action he cannot he does not think so much and Hamlet on the other hand he is a, a thoughtful person so if Hamlet is replaced by Othello and Othello is replaced by Hamlet then possibly there would have been no you know no tragedy so he is uh, his problem lies in the fact that he thinks more and more which is uh, the main cause of Hamlet's tragedy so uh, I have already uh, mentioned in our conflict so conflict is there in Hamlet's mind, he, his mind, his mind is, his soul is transformed into a battleground. He talks with himself. He talks to himself. He fails to, to come to any decision. He, he cannot take the right decision at the right time. And ultimately, he, his uh, purpose is jeopardized. His purpose is thought and jeopardized. So, uh, procrastination or delay is the main problem so it is inherently uh, uh, it, it remains inherently in uh, Hamlet's character uh, actually Hamlet uh, another point is complex character Hamlet is a complex character he's a man of very complex nature so we cannot predict what he will do uh, when he is needed to take action so in that case he uh, fails for example he he spares claudius when you're saying prayer he did he spared him in the ground that his soul will go to heaven but in the murder of polonius he did not procrastinate he does not delay he impulsively he killed him uh, in the in the action of you know uh, russian crowns and gilden uh, he arranged things in a way that ensured the, the murder of the killing of Russian Gildanstone who was spying on him. So uh, one thing is very clear that Hamlet is uh, prone to, Hamlet is capable of impulsive action. Uh, he cannot, he is not habituated to meditative action, pre-planned action, premeditated action. So that's the problem, main problem. So uh, he thinks more and more, that's the main problem. He, and as a result, he, uh, uh, you know, he fails, absolutely fails to take action. So a complex character capable of impulsive actions, I've already pointed this point. So moral idealism, I've already pointed this point. A romantic bent of mind. So, you know, uh, Hamlet has a romantic bent of mind. Romantic bent of mind. A romantic person is a person who dwells mainly in the world of imagination. A romantic person fails to face the reality of life, same is the case with Hamlet. He fails to take action. When the situation demands that he should come forward and take action, he got the chance to kill Claudius, but he did not kill him, simply uh, on the ground that he so really go to heaven. So this is a lame excuse on the part of Hamlet. So, uh, we can say that Hamlet's character is a very complex type of character, very complex type. Psychologic, one thing I would like to say, Hamlet he has a, a superior 
psychological analysis of human mind for example when uh, when he wanted to make sure the the murder of his father he arranged a play within play he arranged a play uh, he was uh, very closely observing the psychological the uh, condition of claudius he realized everything by reading this the you know facial expression of claudius so he it it became clear to him that he is the murderer of his, of his father suddenly claudius king claudius uh, abruptly uh, uh, left left the you know theater so hamlet is a man of very superior psychology he had a deep you know deep of uh, a quality of observation deep capacity of observation deep capacity of analysis things that happened around him uh, he was you know uh, uh, hamlet was uh, um, had, had a lot of problems had a lot of problems lot of problems so actually claudius claudius uh, 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 did not uh, want him to to survive he planned a murder by rosin trans and glenstone so when he failed to get him killed then he made another conspiracy to get him killed by laertes laertes so hamlet he was he was, he was you know besieged with a lot of troubles lot of problems so he is a man of head and heart hamlet is a man of head and heart so he loved ophelia he loved ophelia very much so uh, we can say that hamlet is really a tragic, tragic character He, 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 but he differs from uh, aristotle's concept of tragedy uh, shakespeare uh, created the character of uh, hamlet in a way that is totally different from aristotle concept of tragedy so hamlet has some qualities some traits who does not who, who do not match with aristotle concept of tragedy he is a tragic hero but he is a tragic hero of different type so i have already pointed out in the beginning of my uh, today's uh, discussion i pointed out that hamlet's character remains a mystery it's a mystery it's a mysterious character it cannot be uh, 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 cannot be you know uh, analyzed in, on, in in a simple way in a simple manner in a simple manner sometimes he is very moody he is very moody sometimes he is very melancholy sometimes he is very jolly so he, so nothing can be predicted about this character so he is a he is a very uh, impulsive type of man very impulsive type of man and i was a, as i have already pointed that he he is not habituated to any premeditated or planned you know planned action so he uh, he is he is able to take action when he is excited when he is under impulsion so this is the the character of hamlet so today i have just try to uh, i just try to explain what sort of man hamlet was so that's all very important possibly i have been able to give you some idea about hamlet hamlet nature and you know um, uh, his his characteristics so that's all very important so i'll not elaborate my today's session so i've just try to give you some ideas about uh, hamlet's uh, you know character okay that's all thank you all very much